in a Substack blog post titled, What the Fuck is EAC? Or actually, What the F Star is EAC? You write, strategically speaking, we need to work towards several overarching civilization goals that are all interdependent. And the four goals are increase the amount of energy we can harness as a species, climb the Kardashev gradient. In the short term, this almost certainly means nuclear fission. Increase human flourishing via pro-population growth policies and pro-economic growth policies. Create artificial general intelligence, the single greatest force multiplier in human history. And finally, develop interplanetary and interstellar transport so that humanity can spread beyond the Earth. Could you build on top of that to maybe say, what to you is the EAC movement? What are the goals? What are the principles? The goal is for the human techno capital mimetic machine to become self aware and to <laughs> hyperstitiously engineer its own growth. So let's let's decompress define that. each of those uh, yeah. words. So you have humans, you have technology, yeah. you have capital, and then you have you have memes, information, right? And all of those systems are coupled with one another, right? Humans work at companies, they acquire and allocate capital, and humans communicate via memes and information propagation. Um, and our goal was to have a sort of viral, optimistic movement that is aware of how the system works. Uh, fundamentally, it seeks to grow. And we simply want to lean into the natural tendencies of the system to adapt for its own growth. Um, so in that way, you're right, the EAC is literally a mimetic optimism virus that is constantly drifting, mutating, and propagating in a decentralized fashion. Right. So mimetic optimism virus. So you do <laughs> want it to be a virus to, to yeah. maximize the spread. And uh, it's hyperstitious, therefore the optimism will incentivize its growth. We see EAC as a sort of a meta heuristic, a, a sort of very thin uh, cultural framework from which you can have much more opinionated forks, right? Fundamentally, we just say that it's good. The, what got us here is this adaptation of the whole system, mm -hmm. you know, based on thermodynamics, and that process is good and we should keep it going. Mm -hmm. Right, that is the core thesis. Everything else is okay. How how do we ensure that uh, we maintain this malleability and adaptability? Well, clearly, not suppressing variants uh, and 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 maintaining uh, free speech, freedom of thought, freedom of information propagation, and freedom to do AI research is important for us to converge the fastest on the space of. Uh, technologies, ideas, and whatnot that lead to this growth. Um, and so ultimately, you know, there's been quite a few forks. Some are just memes, but some are more serious, right? Vitalik Buterin recently made a DIAC fork. He has his own sort of fine tunings of EAC. Does anything jump out to memory of the unique characteristic of that fork from Vitalik? I would say that it's it's trying to find a middle ground between EAC and sort of EA and AI safety. To me, like having a movement that is opposite to what was the mainstream narrative that was taking over Silicon Valley was important to sort of shift the dynamic range of opinions. Sure. And you know, it's it's like the balance between centralization and decentralization. The real optimum is always somewhere in the middle, right? Uh, but but for EAC, we're pushing for entropy, novelty, disruption, malleability, speed, uh, rather than being like sort of conservative, suppressing thought, suppressing speech, adding constraints, adding too many regulations, slowing things down. And so it's kind of, we're trying to bring balance to the force, right? Mm -hmm. the systems. <laughs> <laughs> balance to the force it's, of human it's, civilization, yeah. It's literally the forces of constraints versus the entropic force that mm -hmm. makes us explore, right? Systems are optimal when they're at the edge of criticality between order and chaos, mm -hmm. right? Between constraints, um, energy minimization, and entropy, right? Systems want to equilibrate 
balance these two things. And so I thought that the balance was lacking. And so we created this movement to to bring balance. Well, I like how, uh, I like the sort of visual of the landscape of ideas evolving through forks. So sort of kind of thinking on the other part of history, uh, thinking of uh, Marxism as the original repository and then Soviet communism as a fork of that and then the Maoism as a fork of uh, the, of, the, of Marxism and communism. And so those, those are all forks. They're exploring different ideas. Thinking of culture almost like code, right? Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, you're, what you prompt in uh, the LLM or what you put in the constitution of an LLM is, is, is basically its cultural framework, what it believes, right? Um, and uh, you can share it on GitHub nowadays. So starting trying to take inspiration from what has worked in the sort of uh, machine of uh, software uh, to adapt over the space of code, could we apply that to culture? And our goal is to not say, you should live your life this way, X, Y, Z, is to, ha is to set up a process where people are always searching over subcultures and competing for mindshare. And I think creating this malleability of culture is super important for us to converge onto the cultures and the heuristics about how to live one's life that are updated to, to modern times. Because there's really been a, a sort of vacuum of, of spirituality and culture. People don't feel like they belong to any one group. And there's been parasitic ideologies that have taken up opportunity to, to populate this petri dish of of minds, right? Uh, Elon calls it the mind virus. Um, we call it the the D cell mind virus complex, which is the decelerative that is kind of the the overall pattern between all of them. There's many variants as well, um, and so you know if there's a sort of viral pessimism decelerative movement, we needed to have not only one movement uh, but you know many many variants. So it's very hard to pinpoint and stop. But the overarching thing is nevertheless a kind of uh, mimetic optimism pandemic. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, okay, let me ask you, do you think EAC to some degree is a cult? Define cult. I think a lot of human progress is made when uh, you have independent thought. Hmm. So you have individuals that are able to think freely and very powerful uh, mimetic systems can kind of lead to group think. There's something in human nature that leads to like mass hypnosis, mass hysteria, where we start to think alike yeah. whenever there's a sexy idea that captures yeah. our minds. And so it's actually hard to like break us apart, like yeah. pull us apart, diversify thought. So I'm to that degree, to, to which degree is everybody kind of chanting eak eak like the sheep and animal farm well first of all it's fun it's rebellious right yeah. like uh, you know many um i i think we lean into there, there there's this concept of sort of meta irony right of of sort of being on the boundary of like we're not sure if they're serious or not and it's yeah. it's much more playful and much more fun mm -hmm. right like um for example we talk about thermodynamics being our god mm -hmm. right um, and sometimes we do cult like things, but there's no like ceremony and, and robes and whatnot. Uh, not so, yet. not yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, but ultimately, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I totally agree that it seems to me that humans want to feel like they're part of a group. So they naturally try to agree with their neighbors and, and find common ground. And, and that leads to sort of mode collapse in the space of ideas, right? We used to have sort of one cultural uh, island that was allowed. It was a typical subspace of thought and anything that was diverting from that subspace of thought was suppressed or you were canceled, right? Now we've created a new mode, but the whole point is that we're not trying to have a very restricted space of thought. There's not just one way to think about EAC and it's many forks. And, and the point is that there are many forks and there can be many clusters and many islands and I shouldn't be in control of it uh, in any way. Uh, I mean, there's no formal org uh, whatsoever. Uh, I just put out uh, tweets and, and uh, certain blog posts and people are free to 
defect and fork if there's an aspect they don't like. And so that makes it so that there should be a sort of deterritorialization in the space of ideas so that we don't end up in one cluster that's very cult-like. Mm-hmm. Um, and so cults usually, they, they, don't, they don't allow people to defect or start competing forks, whereas we encourage it, right? 